to make a new type of news. New insights, new styles, and new topics every day. We are the News Generation. Making news just for you. It's Thursday, December 7th here in Seoul. I'm Song Yujin filling in for Shin Yan, and you're watching News Generation. Now, today we have a special new face joining us in the studio. It's Im Sang Yeok. So, Sang Yeok, could you please introduce yourself to our viewers? Okay, so, first of all, thanks for having me. Uh, hello, everyone. I am Sang Yeok, and currently I work as a freelance interpreter and translator. I'm really happy to join the crew today. A warm welcome on behalf of our News Gen fam, and as always, we have our Nao Song here today. Hi, everyone. Now, both are here to speak on on behalf of people in their 20s and 30s. Now, as usual, we're going to begin with the news feed, which covers different hashtags and news items that have been trending on social media over the past 24 hours. We start in Arlington, Virginia, which was rocked by a house explosion on Monday. Police say the suspect, identified as 56-year-old James Yu, is believed to have died when his home exploded. Medical examiners are working on identifying the human remains found at the site. Authorities are investigating what caused the explosion, but it happened after the suspect discharged a flare gun several times. Three police officers suffered minor injuries, but no neighbors or bystanders were hurt. Moving on, we're continuing to see a surge in Bitcoin prices. The price of the cryptocurrency topped 44,000 US dollars for the first time since April 2022 at one point on Tuesday. Experts and industry insiders say this upward momentum is a result of investor optimism that the US Federal Reserve will cut interest rates next year and that the Securities and Exchange Commission will approve a spot Bitcoin exchange traded fund early next year. Finally, moving on, K-pop girl group Blackpink have officially extended their group contract with their management agency. YG Entertainment announced on Wednesday that the four members signed a, quote, exclusive contract for group activities based on strong trust. The agency hinted at albums and world tours to come in the near future, but did not disclose details on individual contract renewals. This follows several months of contract negotiations, which made fans worry that the group could split up, mainly because there's this so-called seven-year curse in the industry industry where most K-pop groups tend to disband after their seven-year anniversary. So here in the studio, I want to ask you, were you among those fans or people who are worried that Blackpink would disband or did you actually see this group contract renewal coming? I mean, I actually didn't see the contract <laughs> renewal coming. A lot of people believe that they would split up because right. there were so many offers coming mm -hmm. in from various companies and mm. countries and large sums of number coming in for the individual mm -hmm. members. And so with these rumors, stocks were going down and people <laughs> were selling. However, um, we just want to point out that this is still for the group contract for Blackpink. Mm -hmm. um, they're still working on the individual contract for uh, each artist. Um, so that might not happen. We will wait and see. But they've actually done so much together as a group, letting Korea be known to mm -hmm. the world. Definitely I appreciate right. that so much. So I hope that they continue their good work. Right. It's very exciting that we will see Blackpink as a group in the future from next mm -hmm. year and the year on. Now, Sang Yeok, what about you? Did you see this contract renewal? Did you expect it? Well, to be honest, I'm not a really big fan of K-pop idols, mm. but I did hear the news that the girl group Blackpink right. will uh, soon disband. Well, actually, uh, just like any other idol groups, uh, I did expect that uh, Blackpink would face this kind of issue because, as you know, because they are idol groups, mm -hmm. not solos, right. all the members may have uh, like different uh, persuasion mm, of goals. dreams and goals. And I don't necessarily blame them because mm -hmm. Blackpink is gaining a huge popularity both in and mm -hmm. out of Korea. So some of the members would uh, want to go for solo albums or acting, but I think it's a really good news that this uh, girl group decided to renew their contract. Mm, right, looking forward to the amazing music that Blackpink will bring on. And that was our news feed for this Thursday. Now we're going to move on to our main discussion topic of the day. Now these days in Korea, there is a very interesting saying that for the younger generation like us, saying the words, I'm sorry, is tough. So why is that? My AI voice secretary explains. Apologizing has always been important for keeping things good between people. We sometimes say sorry even when we haven't really done anything wrong, just to keep things smooth or out of politeness. But these days, it feels like things are changing. Recently, a post on an online community talking about how apologizing has become a challenge has gotten great attention. Some wondered what's so hard about it. While others said, there are times nowadays when it's just better to keep quiet. So 
As we've just seen from the VCR, there's this emerging perception that the younger generation is, well, not great at apologizing. Now, the big question is today is, is this perception a fact or a myth? So let's first explore some of the reasons that are given to explain why our generation seems to struggle with giving apologies. Hmm. It doesn't seem to be entirely a myth. I mean, I felt it personally too. <laughs> Perhaps it's this generation's characteristics of being able to stand up for themselves right. and being self-protective, mm -hmm. whether it be for their rights or even sometimes our pride. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the East Asian culture traditionally consisted of apologizing yeah. even when you didn't do something right. wrong. And this was considered to be polite, right? Um, however, this generation is learning that sometimes people take advantage of mm -hmm. that. Um, they take that and kind of take uh, the apology and use it as a weak point. Right. Um, being held responsible for something that you didn't do and you just apologized out of the goodness of your heart is not fun. Um, as there's a large spread of people crossing boundaries, whether it be in private relationships mm -hmm. or in business, opting not to apologize seems to be somewhat of a way to protect yourself. Mm, I agree. And I think you made a very valid point because in the past there was this East Asian Confucian um, culture that we always said sorry, even even in cases where we did nothing wrong. But mm. I think that um, these days, because of the changing societal atmosphere, there are times even when we say sorry, people sh just shoot back at you, then why did you do something that made you say sorry? So I mm -hmm. think that this kind of this is kind of like a partly because of a mm -hmm. shifting trend or mm -hmm. shifting atmosphere in the society. Now, what do you think, Sangyeong? Well, first of all, I do agree that many millennials and Gen Zs are reluctant to express their apology even if they have done something wrong. And I think there are two reasons behind this. So uh, first is the digital evolution. The millennials and Gen Zs are the generation that are really used to and comfortable uh, chatting online uh, using social media and other platforms. So. When, uh, when it comes to the reality, when they face the in-person communication, mm. they uh, feel really awkward yeah, to hard. express their uh, true feelings, mm. emotions, and I think that's one of the reasons they're having difficulties to express their apologies for that. And another reason can be, uh, in the past, the society was well more open and tolerable mm -hmm. to one's mistakes, but mm. these days, uh, many people are reluctant to accept one's apology, and they just uh, punish uh, somebody for doing something wrong, so in this case, many youth would probably think, why should I make mm -hmm. an apology mm -hmm, when right. nothing changes? So uh, I think this is a bit frustrating because if this kind of social atmosphere keep continues, then obviously no one would uh, really step up to make an mm. apology even if he or she did something wrong. Mm. Right, so our generation being used to using uh, digital technology and used to digital communication and also kind of like the societal atmosphere that's become less merciful and mm -hmm. kind of harsh are one of the reasons I think. So um, as you reflect on yourselves and the people around you, do you believe that our generation actually is bad at saying the words I'm sorry? Well, although I'm someone who's in the millennials group, uh, <laughs> I usually say I'm sorry or oh, thank you so much because <laughs> as a freelance interpreter, right. I have to like face different various mm -hmm. clients. Right. So it's not just about uh, necessarily expressing apology, but it's for the sake of my business relations with others. Mm -hmm. But I do agree that uh, overly expressing apology can be like a deem that's too low key, mm -hmm. even though you haven't done something wrong. But actually expressing apology when you really did something wrong is should be the appropriate manner here. Mm -hmm. And not right. just about this kind of uh, expressing apology, but if you're a person working in the service sector, I think the number one priority is actually building social relations mm -hmm. with others. So right. although you haven't done something wrong, you should still try to uh, express your thoughts and uh, apologies uh, even though you haven't really done something wrong. I mm. think it's just for the sake of the social matter. Mm. I think that striking that balance will be really important. So saying sorry when you need to, whether that be business purposes or mm -hmm. whether you did actually something wrong, but there you don't really have to say sorry when you've done nothing wrong. Actually. Mm. So what do you think, Niall? I mean, I certainly agree with the whole uh, balance thing. Everything mm. is about balance. And right. like Sangyuk was saying, sometimes professionally it is necessary to apologize to kind of ease that business relationship mm -hmm. because it's all relational, emotional. Um, however, I personally am quite strict when it comes <laughs> to bigger issues that I will be held responsible for. Right. So I would point out the source of the problem if it wasn't me. If it is, I need to step up and definitely take the responsibility. Hmm. But um, I point out the source of the problem 
and talk about it with the people there. And I think that's what the general, mm. um, genuine conversation conversation would be. And at first, when you start driving too, people would say, "Oh, like don't take the blame yeah. ever because you could end up in a Be a little bit that. of a financial right, struggle right. if you just admit to all your mistakes." Mm -hmm. So I think it really takes that discernment and wisdom to navigate when to profusely apologize and mm -hmm. genuinely apologize versus. Being wise about it, <laughs> right? So just like Sangyong mentioned, the balance is always important. Mm -hmm. So we um, asked ab about um, what you think about apologizing. So we also asked our viewers whether they believe they apologize fairly well, and what does it take for them to say sorry. Now here's what three of them had to say. So let's look at the comments. Uh, Chris says I over apologize. That's my issue. M I M S says I do believe that I apologize well as a teacher. It's an important skill to model to students so they know what taking accountability. For their actions look like. Tasmia says, I always apologize to anyone for anything, even if it's not my fault, because I don't like any disharmony or want to ruin anyone's day. So looking at these comments, this is quite different from what we discussed today, but I think that there is a lot of reasons behind it, because some may apologize fairly well, depending on their job, mm -hmm. if they're a student, and if they have sometimes been criticized for mm -hmm. saying sorry a lot, then they might be hesitant to say sorry. And I think that millennials and Gen Zs, we have a wide age span, because mm -hmm. we range from the early 1980s right. to 2000s so that may be some of the reasons why some millennials are tending to apologize well and mm -hmm. some are not again it's about the balance <laughs> right it's always about the balance so now switching gears a bit similar to this is the idea that our generation is quite hesitant when we are trying mm -hmm. to extend a helping hand so what's this all about well actually there was a recent post on one of the online community website mm -hmm. it was from an anonymous account and it says that a man shouldn't do CPR for for women when they faint. Now, okay. the reason is quite absurd is mm -hmm. because you may be sued for sexual mm. harassment. Of course, there are no like legal cases in the past mm -hmm. where a man was a uh, lawsuit for the sexual criminal or sexual harassment just because he did CPR on women. Mm -hmm. uh, however, this post clearly shows that our society is really unwilling to help others when they're in need. Mm -hmm. And if this trend continues, then I believe that more and more people will not actually reach out for others' help and vice versa. We will not be able to get help from others when we are actually in need. Mm, I think there's a very valid point that you may think that one of the reasons why we are getting this perception is because we're kind of more cautious and careful because mm. nowadays social media, um, it's emerging, it's booming. So even if our, our small actions can turn something into big. So mm -hmm. what are your thoughts, Niall? I mean, I do think that there's a certain amount of fear that comes along with right. it. But I think the biggest thing for millennials and Gen Z is the fear of stepping into a boundary that's beyond their own. And it's considered rude and maybe sometimes even dangerous to kind of go into someone else's mm -hmm. boundary. Right. Unless you're specifically asked to help, we feel like we feel like we're kind of intruding on their mm -hmm. lives. In Korean, there's a word called ojirap <laughs> or being kind of nosy. Yeah. Nobody asked your help. Why are you stepping in, mm -hmm. even if it looks like it's trouble. But I do think that people are also more hesitant to ask for help right. as well. It's not that we're necessarily cold hearted. Mm -hmm. It's that we've become very conscious of strangers and boundaries mm, that we right. need to keep. And I think that another reason is because these days um, it's all about ability, being competent, and mm -hmm. sometimes asking for help kind of may imply mm -hmm. that you are incompetent. There is like, it's kind of sad. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of sad. So another characteristic from our generation. So to delve into deeper into these perceptions, we're now going to include a psychology expert in our talks. We'll be right back, so stay tuned. So today we're joined by Christy Chun, who's a counselor at the Torch Trinity Counseling Center in Seoul. Welcome, Christy, to the show. Hello. Hi. Hi. Thanks for joining us. So is it actually true that millennials and Gen Z struggle with apologizing? 
Well, on the surface level, I think people may think that MVs are less apologetic, but not all MVs, of course, as we mm. have seen the opinion polls. And I think this can happen when apologizing collides with the values MVs might have. Just to highlight a few, being more individualistic and self-assertive. In a relationship, when MVs are too vocal about their opinions, it can deliver the message of, I'm right and you're wrong. Mm -hmm. And so the other person might feel like and these are very strongly opinionated and not able to say sorry. And the older generation in Korea especially would say, mm -hmm. sorry first and not even express your opinions, right. especially mm -hmm. to someone higher in position or age. And again, another characteristic of MVs, fairness and justice. If MVs are in a situation where saying sorry is not necessary and doesn't seem to be fair, they would rather not say so. And saying sorry can actually put someone in a more inferior position. And MVs who value quality and fairness would be reluctant to be in a weaker position. So if saying sorry or even helping others is not going to be for the benefit, MVs may be reluctant to say sorry. Okay, so moving on to the second question, the idea that the younger generation is bad at apologizing stems from the perception that millennials and Gen Zs are lack responsibility and solidarity. So what factors do you think have contributed to this perception? We would definitely have to consider how the modern society contributed to this perception. The past few decades, there has been a shift from a focus to the collective to the individual or self, even in more collectivistic cultures like in Korea. And in modern Korean society, people strive for profit, success, achievement. And on an individual level, this means you just have to do good in a lot of aspects. <laughs> and performing well in your workplace, appearing good in social media, getting acknowledge acknowledgement from your peers based on what you achieve or consume. Now, in all of these aspects, you have to do good, right? And so if you're not doing good and you're saying sorry, which is saying I'm doing bad, you know, people are not going to be willing to say that and express that. And also another thing that, you know, can be considered is because of doing good on the outside, it kind of can actually weaken your social tie with others and it can create an empty self inside. And if you feel empty inside, MZs might be more, more prone to striving for acknowledgement and admiration to fill in their emptiness. And mm -hmm. if this gets too high, you know, someone might be a little bit more self-centered and be more self-protective. Makes sense. Um, lastly, how can we address this issue? And if the younger generation is indeed bad at apologizing, how should we approach this and resolve this issue? I think whether it's NDs or not, it's hard for someone to apologize when you are criticizing that person and saying you're wrong. Right. Um, and so I think we all should work on being assertive in a, in a non-criticizing or blaming way. Mm -hmm. And one way to express yourself is by using an I message or I statement. Mm -hmm. So an I message can help you communicate your concerns, feelings, and needs without blaming others. Mm -hmm. We have to be wise about being self-assertive. And I think this goes to both MDs and for those who would have to communicate with MDs. And so one last point I'd like to mention is, is let's all work on accepting yourself as who you are, getting acknowledgement and having to do good is hard in this modern society, but we can't be all perfect. We can't excel in everything. So let's accept our shortcomings and weaknesses too and still feel we're good enough. And once we are able to accept both our good and bad sides, we will be more understanding and empathetic towards others. And a huge solution to lessening our self-centeredness in this society is increasing empathy towards oneself and to others. All right, Christy, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you. So some very insightful words from Christy. Now, before we wrap up our discussion today, is Hanyuk, this was your first time as part of the news gen today. So any final thoughts on the perceptions that we talked about? Well, actually, throughout today's uh, episode, I usually mostly said that uh, most of the younger people are reluctant to express apology, but I just I don't want to be too skeptical. Mm -hmm. Whether it's boomers or millennials, there are always exceptions. Right. And I recently read through an article uh, that said that a young 20-year-old 
young man uh, actually uh, cleaned up the vomit thrown up by another passenger mm -hmm. in the subway. So like this, uh, there are always those people who are warm and kind and always those people who are unwilling to mm -hmm. uh, acknowledge their wrongdoings and faults. So it's actually a matter of a person rather than a matter of a generation, I mm -hmm. think. Mm -hmm. Right, and to really make our society warmer than right now, Niall, what do you think, how can we address this issue? Um, I think what Christy said really makes sense that mm -hmm. using the I language, right. she was kind of pointing out a smarter way to mm -hmm. communicate. And I think this is so important. Emotional and social education, kind of that emotional intelligence to understand what the other people are saying and kind of having that boundary, mm -hmm. that safety net. And when someone needs help and someone feels mm -hmm. angry and hurt and someone crosses a line, mm -hmm. we should be able to communicate without destroying the other person. Mm -hmm. Hey, you're doing this right now. Right. And the other person should feel safe to apologize mm -hmm. and that person should also be kind of graceful about it as well. Mm -hmm. I think that makes for a more accepting society. Mm -hmm. Some very great tips using the I message and also emotional intelligence mm -hmm. now. That's all the time we have for today. But don't be worried because News Gen is here every morning from 9.30 to 10 a.m. Korea time bringing you more topics young people are talking about. Special thanks to Im sang -yuk. Thank you. And now no problem. Thank you everyone for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. We are News Generations. Generations.